OK, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, let's let's get into this. This uh, this video is going to be on um, StackCrunch and uh, on the mini, mini project five. I initially thought I was going to separate this into two videos, but I think we can do it in one. So um, so that's what we'll be focusing on in this video. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to share my window here first. So let's open up. Uh, my lab. So um, a lot of reason, a lot of the reason why we are using my lab it specifically is for StackCrunch. Um, so StackCrunch is included in, in the, it is, it is part of the uh, Pearson publishing thing. So it is included in your my lab uh, math account. Uh, to access it uh, just by itself individually, you would go into my, uh, my lab. Uh, you'd scroll down and you'll see here there is a stack crunch uh, in button in the menu. So you click on that and you'll click on the start uh, start. <laughs> anyway, I want to say start on the stack crunch um, link and open stack crunch. It's going to open up another another window and this is stack crunch in and of itself. So uh, from here you can um, you can use StackCrunch just by itself. A lot of what we're going to be uh, doing with StackCrunch is actually going to be from um, from the homework. And so I'll actually we'll we'll go in uh, into not only Mini Project Five but probably one or two of these other um, assignments and show you how to open up uh, the data using StackCrunch from there. Um, but you can also use StackCrunch for any kind of, of data. If you were doing your own survey, you could do that. You could use uh, StackCrunch for that as well. Um, you'll notice that the setup is very similar to Excel. Uh, the difference here is obviously that this is more geared towards statistics than Excel is. Uh, I think Excel does have some, um, Excel does have a decent range of statistics uh, that, it, that you can use with it. Uh, but uh, we'll not get too much into that. that that'll be for, for your own personal study if you're interested in that. Um, so the main uh, two venues that we're going to be using here is stat uh, and summary stats. A lot of this other stat uh, information is stuff that is, um, I would say, a lot more deeper into statistics than we are going in this in this course. If you uh, go on and uh, further take a, a statistic, statistics course in the future, then you'll be using a lot more of this. Uh, but we'll be using summary stats. Uh, mostly, I think, columns, because that's usually how the uh, information is, is organized. Or the grouped bin data is, is uh, useful as well. Uh, the other menu you're going to be using is graph. So graphing here, you can do a bar plot, a pie chart, just a regular chart, a uh, histogram we're going to definitely be using. Um, you'll notice that there is also an option here for a scatter plot if you wanted to uh, use a scatter plot, um, if you wanted to see if there's correlation between two variables. Uh, but we're not going to be creating that from, from scratch in this course. So it's just, it, that's a possibility here in one of the menus. Um, now, if you, uh, if you have data that you're working with, you can go to data and load from a file. So if you have a file on your computer that has survey data, you can open it from there or from Dropbox. Um, or you can also look at shared data sets. So there is uh, shared data sets uh, or featured data sets. Either one of those works. I would, I would probably focus. I think, I think those might be the uh, similar, but um, we'll, we'll mostly look at the shared data sets. So, um, just to kind of uh, demonstrate some of the features here, let's go to shared data sets. And uh, also for, for the um, mini project five, there is one question where you'll be using a data set here that is a shared data set. Uh, so you'll be able to find that. Um, sorry, <laughs> I did not realize my phone was not on silent. Let me fix that. Okay, there we go. Um, 
there is going to be an op, uh, you know, there's a search option here. So you can find the data set that they're looking for. You just have to copy the, the title that they give you. But let's just open up movie and box office earnings. And then let me just double check that I'm on the right window here. Okay. Uh, so it's loading, loading that. And uh, let's take a look at the data once it gets loaded. Um, and we'll, we'll take a look at a lot of the things that you can do with StackCrunch, and you'll see that a lot of the a lot of the things that we're going to do with StackCrunch um, are a lot of the things that we've already seen in class. Uh, so you'll see the way this this uh, this. Let's adjust these columns so it's a little bit more readable. Uh, the way that this survey data was was uh, put in, you have the movie here, uh, so it has the movie, uh, the month that the movie was released, the day, the year. And then you also have uh, budget, which is in millions, millions of dollars, uh, domestic gross and worldwide gross uh, earnings, both also in millions of dollars. And this is organized in columns. And I think uh, most of the survey data I've seen has been organized in columns. It might be organized in rows. So you might have the like the uh, movie here and then the titles after that. But I think most of the ones that I've seen are organized here in columns. So let's go to stat and summary stats. Again, the, the rest of this is for other statistics that we're not really going to get into. And columns, because this has been organized into columns. And so you'll see it'll, it'll bring up this window. And hopefully that is showing. Yeah, OK, I think that is showing. Um, I'll double check that uh, when I compile the video here. But um, you'll see that you can select the column that you want to look at. So um, obviously, if you select movie, there's not there's almost nothing that you can do in terms of statistics there because uh, that category is not a quantitative uh, category. It's not numerical. Let's, uh, let's focus on budget. And you can also group by, so here you could group by year. Uh, and we'll, we'll get further into that. So you can use uh, a lot of this other data that we have, like here we have the years, um, to kind of separate the data if you want to look at uh, in individual years compared to each other or things like that. Um, or uh, take, for example, if you were looking at domestic gross earnings, you could look at that in terms of the budget and things like that. Uh, now the statistics here, uh, what is blue is currently selected. Um, so we're, we're going to be changing that a little bit. Uh, let's, we want N, so N is the number of data points that are being included. So I always like to include N. It's, uh, it's going to show the amount, the number of, of data points included. Uh, we're going to want the mean. And so here, if you do control click, then you can select um, various things with that, uh, multiple things without the, uh, the in between. And what you have selected will appear in this, in this window right here on the right. Uh, so we don't want mean. Let's get uh, median and mode. Mode is here at the bottom. And let's also include the standard deviation because we've talked about that as well. Um, percentiles, we don't really, we're not going to do much with that. And this other statistics, we're not really going to do much for that either. So, um, so here we've uh, selected summary stats. We're looking at the budget uh, column and we're looking at uh, the mean, the median and the mode as well as the standard deviation. So we compute and that'll bring up this, uh, this table with this information. So it'll tell us first, what is, the, uh, what is the column that we use? This was budget. N, that's the number of entries. So the number of data points we have is 5,222. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's a lot of, of data points there. You could do this by hand, but realistic, let's be realistic. No one's going to do that by hand. Um, you're not going to want to do that by hand. Uh, so the mean here is 32.5 million. The median is 18 million. The mode is 20 million. And the standard deviation is 41.5 million. So that is our, um, our information there. Uh, you can maximize this, uh, I guess, if you were trying to get a, a screenshot to include in, into into a, on a document or report, you can actually click on options and save um, and save that information 
there. Uh, let's close that. Let's go back to stat, summary stats and column, uh, columns. Let's pick budget again. Uh, but now let's look at our five number summary that we talked about. So uh, what we would need for, for a box plot. So we need the uh, minimum is lowest value. Uh, Q1 is the, is the lower quartile. Uh, then we want the median. Um, so some of these you'll have to scroll up and down until you find it. There's our median. Again, this uh, window right here on the right is what I have selected. So we have the, uh, and, and is the order in which it will appear as well. So we have the minimum value. Q1 is the lower quartile. We have the median. Then we need the upper quartile, which is Q3. And then we need the maximum value. Uh, so maximum is right there. And then let's hit compute. And that gives us our uh, five number summary. Now, again, there were 5,222 entries here. So what you could do is you could go through and find these numbers on your own by hand. But again, that, realistically, you're not going to want to do that, especially with 5,000 entries. That's just a little bit... Uh, that would be a little bit of an issue. Um, so, so that has our five number summary. Again, this is in budget in millions of dollars. So the minimum is, uh, oh, what is that? 0 0.001 million. So that would be what, 1,000 if we were to convert that. Uh, the lower quartile is 5.7 million. The median is 18 million. The, mac, uh, the upper quartile is 40 million and the maximum budget that we have in this list is 425 million. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. Now, another nice feature with StackCrunch is uh, when, you, when you compile results and you close it, um, you might, if you're, if you're like me, you might accidentally close something that you're using that you need, you might close the wrong window. With StackCrunch, when you compile these results, you are actually not really closing them. It, it minimizes it. So if you look here at the StackCrunch menu, there's a little two there, which means there are two results that have been hidden or that have been minimized. And if you scroll down, there are your results right here. So we can look at, well, here's one of the summary stats that we did and the other summary stat. Uh, so you can click on that and it'll bring up the, uh, the table that, that, the window that we closed. And so they're not really closed, they're more just minimized. and uh, but out of the way, um, which is a nice feature if you tend to close things that you need, like I do. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's that. We can also let's actually let's go back into stats. Let's go into summary stats. Well, let's let's open up one of our last one that we had for our quartiles. Uh, yeah, for quartiles for the uh, the five number summary. Uh, let's say you're going through and you have created a, a, the the data that you want, but you haven't. Uh, you wanted to um, say separate this by year. Um, what you can do is you can actually go into options and edit, and that will bring up your uh, information here, and you can change things as you've done. So even if you've forgotten something, let's say you forgot to put in the median or forgot to put in one of the quartiles, the upper or lower quartile. Uh, then you can um, edit it and open that up. Let's look at the group by function. So if we group, if we do group by and let's do year, and then compute. Um, okay, so this has a lot of numeric values. It's asking if we want to turn on binning. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. We don't want a ton of these, so let's go ahead and turn on binning. Um, so here the binning is by year. Otherwise, we would have a lot. So it looks like this uh, has years from 1900 to 2020. Let's let's edit this again. I want to let's let's include at the beginning here. Let's include n and hold on. <laughs> Let me try and edit. That. Let's try and edit that again. Um, n is the number of data points we have. So let's. I wonder if. Hmm, I don't know if there's a way that you can edit that to be at the beginning. Let's just compute. That'll be fine. And well, we're fine with binning. So n, again, are the number of, of movies, uh, data points, in this case, movies that are in that category. So you'll notice from 1900 to 1920, there are three movies. From 1920 to 1940, there are 18. 1940 to 1960, there are 58. 
and so on. So again, the um, what uh, another I guess another nice uh, thing that that StackCrunch will do is uh, let you know if there is a lot of if there's going to be a lot of information that you might want to bin. So in this case, they're binning years by 20 years, and I, I'm sure there's probably a way to adjust that. Uh, but that's probably getting a little bit farther into what we want to do. So um, you can look at all right for 20, uh, 2000 to uh, 2020, we can look we can find the five number summary there, and the five, that's going to be different from the five number summary from the uh, 1980s to 2000s. All right, so let's close that. Um, then the other things that we're going to be looking at are graphs here. So graphs, um, I think. A lot of these we're not going to be using. Um, obviously, there is a lot of information here that you can uh, that you can calculate. Um, I think mostly what we'll want is histogram, and I want to say the other one is box plot. So let's do box plot. Uh, let's do budget since we've done budget before. And we're not going to group anything. Uh, as you scroll down, you'll notice here there are some markers. You can actually include uh, the mean and the median um, in the box plot. So, or whatever you are creating. Here we're creating box plot. Um, so when you're doing the graphics, you you have these options. If these are check, if these are uh, checkboxed, <laughs> you click the checkbox. You can include the mean and the median. You can have uh, the display be whatever color you want it to. Let's just stick with the default. Uh, let's not worry about any dividers. Uh, graph properties. Again, this you don't necessarily have to worry about or the four multiple graphs. And so let's compute and see what we've got. Uh, right. So, OK, so this is our box plot. Let's actually go ahead to edit. So um, For this, for for this textbook, the, the this textbook likes to draw the talk, textbook likes to draw the box plots horizontally, and you'll notice uh, that is right here where it says other options draw boxes horizontally. So if you click that, it will draw it as we have seen in class. Um, let me maximize this a little bit. Um, now with with StackCrunch, so so here the red was the what was the red? Let's go back to our options. Let's maybe see if we can include some more information here. Um, graph properties. Okay, so green green was the mean and red was the median. All right, so here is the mean, here is the median. And uh, one thing that is nice about StackCrunch, I think I mentioned this in, in class, is that it will have your outliers. So here, actually, these blue blue points are the outliers for for this. Let's go into edit. Let's let's uh, group this by year, actually. Um, and compute that. And it's going to ask us if we want to bin it. And let's bin it. And so now you'll notice we have the box plots for uh, those bins, and this is a little bit difficult to see because of the because of the um, the budget here. Uh, I mean, from 1900 to 1920s, that wasn't even close to 100 million, whereas in the uh, 2000 to 2020, there is. And so here you can compare. I guess it looks a lot. It's a lot easier to compare these ones. Uh, you can compare uh, looking at this. Um, in this case, looking at budget compared with the uh, uh, bend by year. Looking at the uh, the five number summary and the box plots there. Okay, so let's close that. Um, so then the other graphs that you'll be interested in pie chart. You can. Uh, I, we're not going to really do too much with that. Um, Histogram is the other big one that we want to that we want to use. And again, we have to choose our our data that we're looking at. So let's look at budget. Um, and you can do bins here. So here, bins. Let's start at zero. Let's uh, well, let's not actually not put the start at. Let's do the width. Let's not let's not do bins. Let's not do bins. 
Um, sorry, but we don't need that here. Uh, display options. I like to over display the n, but I don't think that is here. Let's include the mean and the median. Do the value above the bar. Um, I think that will work. Compute. Yes, here we go. All right. So again, the uh, the green and the blue lines are the mean and the median. Um, and then here we have the budget. And if you put the mouse over top, it looks like this has already been to the data for us, which makes sense because it, it and there is a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of information here. If you hold the mouse over it, we'll show you what this is. So the first one is from uh, zero to twenty five million. The next one is from uh, 25 to 50 million for the budget. The next one is 50 to 75 million. And this is the frequency, so the number of movies that fit that, that budget. And again, we have the red is the median and the green is the mean. And when you put the mouse over, it will have that. And because I put the values over the bar, this is actually the number of data points in that category. So here, if we look at this, uh, the budget from 50 to 75 million, you'll see that this 514, that represents the number of movies that fit within that budget, within the 50 to 75. And again, also we can uh, group by, let's do year, just as we did before, and do compute. It's gonna ask us to bin, let's hit okay. And now, Actually, what it has is it has six pages. So you'll notice here it has one of six, and down here it has these arrows to go forward and back. So this one is the year 1900 to 1920. The next one is 1920 to 1940. So it shows you the, uh, again, it bins the data here, it bins the uh, budget, and it shows you what is in there. And as you continue on, it'll show you the, the uh, different different years. So here at the very end, uh, 2000 to 2020, there's our histogram for the budget. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. Um, I think, so the histogram and the box plot are mostly what we're going to be looking at. Uh, scatter plot, if you're interested, if you want to see if two variables are related, that is there, but I'm not going to focus on that. Okay, so that is a general overview of StackCrunch and what you can do with StackCrunch. And again, we can use um, our own data. What, what we have done in the past um, is uh, we can uh, do a survey in the Math 120 courses or in any course, really, if you wanted to uh, coordinate that, as long as you have permission, obviously. Um, and then you can compile that into an Excel file and then import it here into StackCrunch and use StackCrunch to uh, to look at these uh, statistics, uh, analyze the data set using st the statistics we've talked about in class. OK, so let me close these windows. And let's look at, I think next, what we'll look at is the assignments. And at the very end, we'll look at the mini project five. Oop, sorry. Uh, let me open up the mini project. <laughs> not the mini project, the assignment manager. Uh, so we're doing chapters five and six are the, uh, well, five, six, and seven are the ones that, that are that are statistics heavy. Um, so let's, let's maybe pick uh, six homework from chapter six and see what we have. So I'm going to open up the preview for that. And let's see what we have going on. And let me just double check, make sure that this is still sharing the window that I want it to. Nope, it did not. So let me switch. Okay, now we should be there. Yes, okay. Um, so here is here is the homework. And for some of these questions, obviously, you don't need to use TechCrunch for. For some of these, you can. Um, so here, uh, for question three, you're looking at what is the body, uh, this is the body temperature in degrees Fahrenheit of randomly selected normal and healthy adults. You want to compute the mean, the median, and the mode of the data set. Obviously, this, because there's only uh, 10 uh, data values, 10, 10 numbers, uh, 10 data points, you'd be able to do this by hand. But let's suppose that you want to check that, uh, you want to check your work using StackCrunch. 
So if you'll notice, maybe it, I don't know if I can scroll in if that will help. I'll zoom in. I mean, uh, if you if you see this double box thing here, that means that there is uh, stuff you can do with the data set. So let me go back to the regular Zoom. So if you click on that, and you'll notice there is an open in StackCrunch option. So let's click that, open in StackCrunch. It'll open up a new window with StackCrunch, and I think that's not going to, yeah, that, that, that didn't share. So let me switch the share there. So it opens up this window, and then we can go to stat and summary stats. Again, column, this is separated into columns. Uh, we just have the one. And we want the mean, the median, and the mode. So we're going to select those and then compute. And there is our mean, median, and mode. And again, uh, this I would recommend if it's a small data set like this with just 10, 10 numbers, I would recommend doing that by, by hand first. And then uh, after that, uh, possibly using StackCrunch to check and verify your solution. Uh, because you will have to, you might have to, let me let me be careful in how I say that. You might have to use, uh, you might have to calculate that by hand on the exam if it's a small data set. So you don't want to um, prevent yourself from practicing by hand, uh, but you can definitely uh, verify your answer using StackCrunch. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the homework here. Uh, and so for anything that has a data set, you'll notice that it has, has that little option to open in StackCrunch uh, for almost all of these. Uh, I don't think I've actually, let me, let me, I don't think I've seen a, a homework question that has a data set that cannot be opened in StackCrunch. Um, so most of these you can. And it should be there available. Uh, where did the stack crunch go? Is it this one? Yes, this one. And so again, we can go to stat, summary stats, columns. And in the next section, so this is 6A. For 6B, you would be finding the five number summaries. So you'd look at N, uh, you would find the minimum. Uh, the lower quartile is Q1, median. Um, which is the middle quartile. The upper quartile is Q3, and then the maximum. And I always like to include N just to see how many data points I have and compute. Oh, I have to select the variable. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to that if we only have one column. Uh, so let's compute. And so then here is our five number summary. If we were looking for that, that's not this section, that'll be the next section. Um, but you can also, just as we did with the other one, uh, do a summary stats on the columns, select the column, and we can also do the mean, the median, and the mode. And again, I'm, I'm uh, right clicking, uh, hold down, sorry, not right clicking, control click um, here to select multiple options. And so then there, there is our mean, our median, and our mode for, for this data set. Okay. So I think that is uh, relatively straightforward um, so far. I, I hope that's relatively straightforward. Let me actually, let me clean this up. Uh, so let me stop the share while I clean up my windows. Um, so that is a basic overview of StackCrunch and what, what uh, StackCrunch can do um, for us. Now, um, obviously there is a lot of, of stuff there in the StackCrunch um, program that we are not going to be using. As you saw, we're only going to be focusing on a few very specific options in StackCrunch, but it is still a fairly decent uh, program to use. Uh, let's open up Mini Project 5 and um, take a look at that. And let me see if I can get this to work with what I had before. So. Um, I believe I found a way to share multiple windows, finally. Uh, let me try that now. And boom, we should be, that should be working. Yes, okay. I'm gonna double check that uh, in the video, but we should be working here. So what I have done before, um, before opening this, before starting the videos, I opened up the StackCrunch window uh, on its own. 
and then I opened up Mini Project 5. So I have Stack Crunch here, I have Mini Project 5 here. Uh, because this first one, the first, uh, I think, one or two questions in Mini Project 5, you're going to be using Stack Crunch, um, but not a data set. So uh, we're going to be using uh, Stack Crunch, but not a data set. So it, there's no button to click open in Stack Crunch because there's no data set. So you'll just open up Stack Crunch on, on your own in, in its own window for the, the first two questions. I, I think first two questions. We'll, we'll, we'll check. Um, so here, you want to generate 10 random numbers between 0 and 1 using the fixed seed 11764. And it tells you, it should walk you through how to do it. So um, select data, highlight simulate, and then select uniform. So you're going to go to data, you're going to select simulate, and uniform. And so this actually, uh, when we open this up, this is simulating um, a uniform distribution. So that would be something similar to if we have a single dice, uh, die, sorry, <laughs> dice is plural. If we have a single die, we're rolling, let's say a, a six-sided six die. Um, if it's a fair die, we should, we should get any of the numbers, you know, the same, the same probability as any of the others, which we'll talk about in chapter seven. Um, but we can use uh, a uniform Distribu a uniform distribution to simulate that uh, to to uh, randomly generate dice rolls die rolls, um, but here uh, we're we're generating numbers between zero and one. So we'll uh, for the number of rows, let's do ten rows because we want ten numbers. Let's do one column, Unif uniform parameters. So this is the minimum and maximum number because we want this between zero and one. We're not going to change that. Uh, we don't want to store, we don't want to worry about storing samples, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, you can change the column name if you want. Uh, although, yeah, that's, that's not really needed. Um, so the last part of this is using a dynamic seed or using a fixed seed. Uh, if you use a dynamic seed, um, whenever you are generating random numbers on, on, a, on a computer, um, there's always what is called a, a random number generator. And uh, usually, if I remember correctly from my studies, they pull from the millisecond that you click on the compute. <laughs> so it's almost impossible for humans, at least, to get the same random numbers. Um, but if you use the same seed, so instead of having it generate the seed from the milliseconds, you're just going to click on used fixed seed, and it's going to give you the same numbers each time because of just the way that it is. Uh, it, it is generated. And so here they want you to use the fixed seed 11764 in this case. And again, that's because it'll give you the same numbers and that way you can, uh, it can check to see if what you have is, is correct. Um, and I believe uh, there's also a, a, an option here, rounding, if you want rounding. And let's look at our uh, other window here, type integers, decimals rounded to th three decimal places. So we want three decimal places. So let's go ahead and round to three decimal places. Let's go ahead and select that. And we'll hit compute. And here are our numbers. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it, it tells us there's a new column that was generated, uniform one. So it goes, went ahead and named that for us. So we can look at that if we need, but these are the numbers that we want. So we would type these in. So we have 0 0.795, uh, 0 0.318, 0 0.728. Let me make sure that I'm not losing my place here. 0 0.128, 0 0.693, 0 0.692, 0 0.063, 0 0.263, 0 0.033, and 0 0.406. And let's go ahead and check answer on that. Okay, so that is what we have there. Next, uh, what is the mean of the numbers? So you find the mean. Uh, so again, you'd go into stat, summary stats, and so on. I'm just going to put in a number just so I can see what the what the next one is. Um, oh, 
but does this one just have part A? Maybe not. Well, maybe, maybe we should do that just to make sure. So let's go to summary stats columns. Uh, here we want the mean, so let's compute that, see what we get. Oh, we have to check uniform thing. So compute the mean is 0 0.412. It looks like we want around to three decimal places. So let's, okay, so then part B, we want three more numbers between zero and one. And here using a different fixed seed. Um, so again, another set of numbers between zero and one. Um, I wish there was a way to show all of the possibilities here instead of just that. Uh, let's go ahead and close that. Um, if we go back into data and simulate, let's go back to uniform. Let's say I wanted to generate a random uh, 10 random numbers between 0 and 6. Let's say I'm simulating a die roll. Then again, we want 10 rows because I want 10 numbers, column 1. Uh, minimum, let's do 1 and maximum 6. Again, I want to simulate rolling a six-sided die. Uh, we, don't want to, we don't want to need to worry about store. Uh, here, we could do, uh, I guess for the column name, we could do die simulator. So we're simulating the rolling a, a die. We'll use dynamic. And here we round to zero places because we want just the whole number. Then we hit compute and notice these would be the die rolls that we have. So we rolled a four first and then a five, a five, a five, a three, a three, a three. A th oh, I guess it, oh no, it is, it is not sorted. Yeah. Um, so that those would be the die rolls. And I think, I think you do that in part C or D, not, not necessarily die rolls, but looking at uh, different numbers that are not um, that are not that. Let me actually let me double check this. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hold on one second. All right, sorry about that. Uh, continuing on, part two. So part two here, we do have a data set that we have. So again, you can click on that and open in StatCrunch. Uh, so that is fine. Uh, what you'll do is you're looking at the line chart. So you'll use StatCrunch to find the, the line chart for that. Uh, let's look at page, uh, not page, problem three. So problem three here, um, well, I guess we could close that window now. We're not using this window anymore. Um, you click on the icon and it, it will show the data. So it opens up the data here. Um, and then again, you'll, you'll see this window here uh, or this icon, this double box that you can open in StackCrunch. So we can do that. It'll open up this and I think I have to switch the view. So let me switch the view there. Uh, have it not be that one, but that one. There we go. Um, so I can close that. So this is now the data uh, that it has here. And so you can create a bar graph of the players. And this is by age. So you would go into stat. And uh, probably histogram. We, well, no, graph and histogram by age. And there is our histogram. Uh, I think this one has been binned. I think there's a way to not bin the data, uh, but you'll select the, the best way to do that. Let me see if there is a, let me, let's go to edit. Um, with, if we put one, then it shouldn't bin the data at all. There we go. Okay. So you'd select the one that looks, that is the closest to what we have. Um, 
And if you click on that, you can click on the uh, one here and it'll show, let's actually, there might be a way, let's go into the options here. I want to say there's a way where it won't be overlapping like it, like it is here, or won't be overlay. No, maybe not. So that's a little bit annoying, but that's that's fine. Um, so you'll, you'll match the histogram here with what you have and answer the other questions again using this data that you've pulled. Uh, let's go to uh, four. Oh, let's click no or yes. OK, so for here, you are actually going to be opening a, a data set. So what you do is you go to, you're looking for Arctic sea ice volume. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to copy that. So right click, copy. And then here on StackCrunch on data, I'm going to hit load from a shared data set. And in the search, I think I lost the window. Did I lose the window? I did. There we go. Uh, then from the window here, I'm going to paste that name and hit enter. And it's going to search the shared data sets. And here it is, the Arctic ice sea volume. So you click on that. And that is the data set you're going to be using. Oops. Oh, it already, uh, so this one, this data set comes with uh, things already generated for you. Uh, so you can open those up. But this is the data set you'll be using for uh, part four. All right. And I think five. So again, five, you're going to be uh, looking for exercise hours. That's in the shared data set. And number six, uh, the data is given for you. So you click on, on this icon and then click on this double box icon to open in StackCrunch. And that's mini project five. So mini project five here, you're using StackCrunch. Um, along with these data sets to uh, get get a kind of a it's kind of like an introduction to StackCrunch, I suppose, in a way uh, helps you get familiar with with what StackCrunch can do. Um, anyway, so that is I think that is all that I wanted to cover in terms of StackCrunch and uh, Mini Project Five. Um, so I'll stop the video there. I'm going to double check once it compiles to make sure that it does include what I want it to include. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that I think that is everything. Um, if you do have any questions, obviously you can let me know. You can send me an email if you need. Um, again, thank you for your patience. I I don't know why my computer was having so many issues, but it seems to have been resolved now. So uh, thank you again, uh, and I will see you in class.